And it is Wednesday, guys, for Trekkie Cars Mission Briefing. We do this every single week looking at a ship from the brand Big Spectrum of Trek Universe. And this is in a very interesting part of this brand, Massive Trek Ooh. Universe. Hi, Stuart. How are you doing? What are we doing today? And is it big? I am good. I'm Captain Foley. It is big. It is fun. It is exciting. It's actually really cool. And we're going to be looking at something from Star Trek Online. Um, basically, it's going to be released on their anniversary, which is January 22nd. And it's part of that new Discovery Mirror Universe expansion that they are doing. So It's so new, it hasn't been released yet, which is, is, right. is, a, is a pleasant thing to do on Trek Yards. And yes, what does it say, Stuart? We are looking at the ISS Styx. And now this is a basically a dreadnought. Um, yes. And uh, we'll, we're going to take a good look at it. Our good friend Thomas Maroney mm -hmm. um, helped us out with these f pictures. So yes. thank you very much, Thomas. Um, We've got some cool and... scale, as always. And to get the, 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 the credit stuff out of the way, designed by Hector Ortiz, they're just crazy cool internal guy. Uh, Ian Richards modeled it. We've got the scale, so that'll be here. And it is a lockbox ship. So as you do the discover ex expansion, the new stuff for uh, their anniversary, you can get the keys and then get this in one of the boxes and then you can fly around in this uh well first picture you can see it's it's a take on the iss charon on the dreadnought which what was the charon stuart um and we've got a picture over here what was that charon was the empress's power or the emperor palace ship mm. basically yeah. um which we weren't impressed with at the time um still going back to rewatch <laughs> i'm still not super ha happy with it this though, the sticks, I think is uh, should have been that ship, um, and I, I think this is Star Trek Online doing that, um, you know, above and beyond kind of call to arms <laughs> of getting things done that I think the Discovery crew or the Discovery people just didn't really focus on too much, and uh, the Star Trek Online guys improved on it. Yeah, Star Trek Online haven't got the same limitations as the Discovery team. They were being forced in certain ways around the Discovery team. <clears throat> that are huge fans of the Prime Canon, even of the, the JJ Canon designs, they can then take the raw, okay, we've got to do this, but let's actually design it into a, what we would have done, or a functional sense. So you can see the original show on here, it's a ship that was designed around certain criteria. We've heard Johnny say it had to have this core, had to, mm -hmm. you know, have this, this, and this, and this, and therefore the design comes out of the, the gimmick. And so you break it down, and you can see, and you see there's two views, the, the back view, you can see it's nacelles, but you really got a sense of that in the front view. Mm. It's got a spore core with livable area on the middle. Doesn't look federation, doesn't look mirror, doesn't look evolution defiant. It's just kind of this weird anomaly. Um, and while interesting, it doesn't link or fit with anything. And that was its one of its big weaknesses. And so now, picture four, here is this new Dreadnought. And yeah, I mean, we would basically give what we thought, but Stuart, mission briefing it. Thoughts? Mm. Uh, well, one of the first things that comes to mind when I see this is, bravo, very good job. <laughs> but uh, I see tie-ins definitely with the um, Shinjo design, uh, especially on those yep. struts and the nacelles. Very similar in style and shape, just bulked up quite substantially. And new, still. Still a new yes. design, new take. Yep, absolutely. And it does remain. It does retain some of that Sharon look as well. They've incorporated that with the, the hull, the way it splits in the mm -hmm. middle. Mm -hmm. uh, very Daredex style, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, th this this thing is pretty cool. Um, I, I, I really, really wish it would have been the Empress's ship, though. Yeah, it, it's far more balanced as a as an, a Federation aesthetic. It being more integrated than cells being more obvious and, and interesting, dare I say. I far prefer the way the, the, the spore core is being the, is used. It's in a special housing at the top mostly armoured, you can only attack from one vantage mm -hmm. point, whereas the Sharon, if you're going to go back, it's vulnerable from the front, the back, the front side, the front top, you know, it's, it's like, visually it's interesting, and obviously you couldn't have flown through it as the Discovery did, and again, the, the plot determined this, the way the ship was designed, rather than the ship the design was whatever and whatever, whereas this one, yeah, it's, it's it gives, it, instantly I think, Crocodile, just the way it's got these ribbing, the long tail, which we'll see in other pictures, it's got a really interesting feel. If you go back to the first picture, in fact, you can see, I mean, you've even got the spikes of the neck. It's, it's very bulky, it's very strong. It's 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 got a real unique vibe, and it doesn't have, again, we're in picture one, it doesn't feel mirror, it doesn't feel Starfleet, but it's got those few touchstones of really important. It's got a partial sorcerer element, 
which instantly gives it a yeah. slight connection. It's integrated like Shinjo, so you can pull the parallels. It's got a very obvious and very clear, um, uh, like you said, pylons and very clear engines. And you can sort of see it all as a functional... Like, it feels more tactical, feels way more armoured, feels more like a flagship of a Terran Empire, feels more like a battleship. Jump back to Sharon. I mean, this isn't this isn't a warship, isn't an attack ship, it's a ship designed around a thing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you know? Um... Well, that yeah. being said, it's got it's, it's very the Sharon is cool with the way they have the sun in the middle or whatever. Mm -hmm. the, the it's visually thing. cool, but and the inside has like almost like Babylon Five style, yeah, where like, so. you can see the parks and stuff, um, which implies a much larger scale than what I get a feeling of the ship. But this ship is definitely a dreadnought battleship, which is what it's designed to. It still keeps most of the cues. But let's see though, Stuart. I was given the scale. Mm. It was designed obviously to fit into the Discovery verse, and obviously it's meant to be of the Sharon lineage, so it's going to be humongous. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not even going to need to ask you, Stuart. The next picture is this scale. We don't know the exact scale of the Sharon, but we can assume, given the show, discovery where it flies right through, this actually probably is a roughly, roughly the same size. But yeah, here she is from the side, and with both the discovery scales and the prime scales, thoughts? Mm. Well, it definitely has that dreadnought feel for it. Um, yeah. I do like dreadnoughts that are big. Um, mm -hmm. because we've talked about that many times. Some of the Federation ones are not so big as far as Red Knots go. This one feels intimidating. It feels yeah. powerful. Mm -hmm. Personally, if I was the Emperor, I'd want to be on something like this as opposed to the Sharon, uh, yep. just because this seems more armored, more protective, uh, much more... Designed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, I could buy that... If the Char if this was the Dreadnought, right, the actual flagship, and then you had the Sharon, which was a small, like, science... Like, that was a power generator, maybe docked inside of this like in the core of this ship was the Sharon ship core or like flying alongside and it was tiny it was like this is like, this is the unit like the emperor's personally uh, private yacht still very very large but not designed specifically well, I, to be oh i would just said like this is the science ship this is this is the power sport ultra power device thing that has the you know it's literally a ship and a gun it has a beam that is a doomsday style weapon that can destroy a planet and a you know spore core and then this can still have a spore drive core because they have the technology but yeah certainly as a warship uh and you know this would this looks to me from this sort of if we think prime cannon looks like a voth attack ship mm. mm -hmm. it's even got that reptilian feel which is a voth thing you yeah you had mentioned an alligator or a crocodile and from the side you definitely get that feeling that vibe from it um so yeah absolutely um Wow, I, yeah. this this size chart's cool, man. I gotta that's, say. That's what I mean. It works with a Voth city ship because that's bigger than this, but yeah. it would work for a post TNG big ship. I mean, if you compare it to you know the the Shinjo and the Enterprise, which I'm sure both and Discovery which both exist, all exist in the Discovery mirror universe. I mean, it shows that all those ships were tiny. This ship is ginormous, um, mm -hmm. but it does feel way more Discovery era because also it's got a flat profile, which is what all Brian Fuller wanted. It's got a very distinct flat, mm -hmm. whereas Sharon is very. But it's still five and yeah. yeah, yeah. This one still maintains that Federation aesthetic of the 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 visible nacelles, the lower slung nacelles. Well, it has those couple of key pieces that are key. Yeah. Um, then Stuart, the next yes. picture is the same thing, but next to the Borg cube, because Ooh. this is just a sense of how you know the Borg cube is the biggest thing ever. Oh, the Sharon's still. It's it's pretty big in comparison. Um, just want to yeah, point, just yeah. show that. Yeah, hopefully we never see the Borg in Discovery, but oh, anyway. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and the next picture, next picture is it from the top, and you Ooh, can again nice. see it with the scale. Pretty, pretty meaty from the top. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely get that uh, Federation look again there. The, like you said, the partial saucer and the, the cells really stand out, and uh, they say Federation, but with advanced tech, uh, and I like that. So. And it de definitely... Honestly, if you look at it compared to the Shinjo top, it, if you cut out a chunk of it, you could make a very similar Shinjo profile. You just extend the back, which is, you know, wh where are you going to go? Do you, do you either go the amount of decks or the pure length of the ship in terms of trying to get that extra internal volume? So I, I kind of I like they're just pushing out the secondary hull back yeah. to keep that flat profile. It, it fits fine. Even the shape kind of matches the Shinjo just pushed back a long way. But yeah, Borg were less impressive in the mirror universe. And boy, that that Connie that we see in um, in um, uh, Mirror Mirror, boy, that was like a really small ship of the fleet, wasn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's tiny. You don't have yeah, you don't have the Discovery Enterprise here for comparison, ah. but um, yeah, the the TOS one is. See, no, we're not going to get into that. Just the fact that the Defiant went back, uh, you would think that there'd be more of that tech in incorporated. But anyway. Well, I can still see they went so far past it, a hundred years past that TOS tech, which is why yeah. their aesthetic should have been completely different. But they didn't. Have, well, they used the budget other places. But it's interesting to think that then you can see the NX01 here. 100 years yeah. brought us from NX to this. 100 years. Whereas 250 years brought us mm -hmm. from NX to E. Just interesting. Because, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the, one of the you know problems of discovery upscaling. It's like it starts to... Get away half from the size. a little bit. If it was half the size, it would still be incredibly impressive. Because it's... You know, the E is big to, to NX. This is a, you know, whichever. But back to the main ship. This is a cool view. This is sort of orthos and a comparison with the Charon graphic. Because you can see it, it does still maintain the split hull view, mm -hmm. which this version, I think, works tremendously better. Mm -hmm. And it, and again, there's the, the obvious tie-ins with the, the Shinjo. If, if the lower part, seeing it from the back like this, it's got that the rear of the Shinzo basically flipped upside mm -hmm. down. Um, so I, I do like that. It, it it almost seems a little bit like a Jem'Hadar attack cruiser on the oh, top. Oh, certainly. Yep. <laughs> Mated with a Shinjo on the bottom, or at yeah, least from the, the front and sides, or the front and back, I mean. Um, but yeah, um, very impressive and definitely intimidating. Um, this thing will be really cool to see in-game. Mm -hmm. Now, Samuel, how can they get this in-game? Is it something you can just purchase? No, you got to you got to play the game, get the keys that are dropped, open lock, lock boxes, boxes, and uh, hopefully get it. If not, you can buy it and you can trade for it. But you know, play enough of the game and it you'll get it eventually, sort of thing. But it's you know, it's not a mandatory ship. It's one of those like fun. Ooh, we designed it, and put it in there just to tease you because you know you know you want it. Try and go get it. You know, have fun with it. <laughs> now, but in yeah, some well, pictures, we'll, we'll see. But but think for a second. Yes. That front view. And that back view, if you cut out the top gem Hadar, that's a Romulan TOS warbird. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yeah, I never really considered that. And it really is. Go to the next view. Mm -hmm. um, now oh, wow. you've got a similar sort of vibe, but now you've also got to plan half. We're now pulling in interesting elements, and other views even cl more clear that there's, a, there's some real Romulan looks here, which are, I don't know if they're intentional or not, I mean, it makes sense. They would have taken over a lot of everyone, mm -hmm. so you'd incorporate mm -hmm. things. But what do you think about this view? Which is, I'm sorry, it's a bit dark, but what do you think about That's this cool. view? Uh, well, if you hadn't said anything about the Romulan, that would have been one of the first things I would have said about this view um, yeah. upon seeing it. Now, we have covered the uh, the big Romulan uh, dreadnought yep. for the uh, eight temporal, a temporal agents yep. thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like, yes, they tied that mm -hmm. in. And as you said, if, if this is a mirror universe, they could be conquering the Romulans, taking their tech, and just incorporating it. And I can see that here, even with that drive on top, harnessing the power of a star, we know that the Klingon, or the Romulans use um, quantum singularities. So it's incorporating different kinds of tech, but definitely this looks the Derodex and or um, the TOS Romulan Dreadnought from Star Trek Online. Um, I even get some vibes of Cardassian tech Mm -hmm. uh, there's yep, a few Cardassian see, yeah. shapes in there, and the I colors see, as yeah. well of the nacelles very much speak uh, mm. Cardassian. No, absolutely. It's it's a, it's an interesting mishmash. But this is the sort of thing we wanted in the Mirror Universe: a sense of yeah. they took over everyone. They wouldn't have the Shinjo would never have existed in the Mirror Universe. We, we talked about this at the time, but the Shinjo from the TOS Defiance perspective was already a 45, 50 year old ship. Why yeah. would a hundred years later? They designed a ship that technologically was 150 years, 100 years below. There's no reason. It's just lazy storytelling. That's why we can, I think we can reckon out the Connie, or it's like a legacy ship, or it's an ultra refit, or whatever. It. So this, at least, yes, has a lot of influences from different things, where, yes, if they took over the Cardassians, they would incorporate things. I think, yeah, it, it, it works better for its... It, it keeps a couple of key Starfleet design tropes, but for the most part, <laughs> throws everything out and does new things. But it keeps that a being couple said, of key things. That being said, I get a very defiant feel from this as well. That forward shape and even, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, it's yeah. like it. We're just seeing a lot of different uh, design styles here. Um, 
At least I am. So. Which would make sense. It, it's a, a mass conglomerate of things. And i got to be clear, I don't mean Defiant that went back in time in the yes. mirror darkly. I mean Defiant from Deep Space Defiant, Nine. not yeah. Tostified. But next picture from the back, and again, mega alligator. I love the ribbed yeah. um, neck feel, clearly armored. I mean, I'm thinking already the, the pieces on the back side, on either side, are like, like what, phasable, like phasered strip turrets. Like, you can imagine if that was all weapons going down oh, wow. right to the back, it would be mind-bogglingly powerful. And you get an easy visual sense of, yep, she's powerful. Sharon, I mean, I doubt there's a single weapon emplacement on her, and we never saw any. This instantly has a visual power to it that real impressive. Stop snapping your fingers. I don't feel so good. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it does have a very reptilian vibe to it um, from this angle. Uh, it, it's just imposing. I mean, even yeah. even if you're attacking it from this angle, like kind of getting the jump on it, it's like, yeah. where do what do we do? <laughs> yeah. um, the the main target, of course, would be the power core at the top there. Um, but still, um, this thing is really cool looking. I really yeah. appreciate this, and the fact they even have the uh, the fins. We're very similar to again the Shenzhou with the uh, oh, registry yeah. on them and the yep. lighting. It's um, kind of hard to see, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Got, got that same style that we've seen in all Discovery ships, even the Clark, that's, even uh, the Discovery nice. Enterprise. Yeah, well spotted, well spotted. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, next picture. This is very. I mean, that front bit is very Romulan, very that dreadnought from TOS, very to plan a half. I mean, real integrated shapes that are like. I mean, is this a, is this a coincidence? I mean, that is like to plan a half. I mean. <laughs> I'd, but it's not, but it's... Oh, dear. Yeah, like... That was cool. That's Yeah, that's all I have to say about this. This is really cool. I want to see this thing in-game and actually be yep. able to... Uh, hopefully I can get one and I can, like, scope around it in 360 because that's always fun. Um, yeah. But but thanks again to Thomas and the team for giving us these yes. very clean images that we can look at. Speaking of, the next picture is just a beautifully clean, again, three-quarters give a really good sense. Uh, I am impressed... Uh, I'll give my closing thoughts. Yeah, it, it's definitely more interesting than Sharon. It makes more, it links better. It, it's more well thought out. I think the power core fits in better and, and you can functionally understand it better, um, which I appreciate. It, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a more weaponized functional version of the design we saw and I hope we see this in the show. If we ever go back to the Mirror Universe, this would be cool. Or maybe this is, you know, in the Section 31 show, maybe Empress Giorgio mm. commissions this ship in, in the Prime Universe, and it's like, wow, they built this, and then in third, and, then, and then in 100 years we built the E, and that's meant to be big. <laughs> maybe she commissions this, gets this built, steals it, goes back to the yep. Mirror Universe, and retakes the throne. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yes. <laughs> Your closing thoughts, Joe. Um, again, yeah, my closing thoughts are this is something that um, I think should have been the Sharon in the show. Uh, I would have been much more impressed with it. Mm -hmm. And I really got to give the Star Trek Online guys a lot of credit. They do some fantastic work. So, absolutely, yep. yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to the new expansion, obviously, and mm -hmm. seeing any more new ships they might have. I'm not sure if this is the only yep. one. I kind of doubt it. I have no idea. That's a good question. I mean, I, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know if they... I'm sure they're waiting to see what, like, the Andorian ships could look like because, you know, they, they work with the Discovery team and the writers and stuff to try and link things in. They have the... the they didn't need to invent any new uh, Federation ships. They had, like, 18 as part of the original pack. Same with Klingon. So this sort of thing is a little bit different, I guess, which is, which is you know, you can't have the Sharon. The Sharon's ultra-specific. This is something custom and better thought out, for sure. It just shows you that a lot of these design traits, it's, the design itself isn't bad. It's that it's not properly thought out this is this is thought out from the ground up you know it's 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 you know uh, ah. we appreciate so, it yeah so my closing thought i just i'm really impressed with this i really want to see more of it and kudos to the star trek online guys because they do a fantastic job so they do. that's basically it in a nutshell guys and a bit now, of fun uh, licensed discovery before we hit discovery real soon real real soon tomorrow mm -hmm. but anyway guys if you like this video if you like the ship 
tell us by clicking the like mm -hmm. button, subscribing to the channel, and commenting down below yes. what you guys think of it. And we look forward to reading those. And don't forget to hit the notification icon so you get notified every time we upload. Mm -hmm. With Discovery Season 2 uh, out now, we're going to be having weekly lives and discussions and then our re regular kind of quick reviews. So definitely lots to look forward to. And we're going to be busy. So if you want to get notified and keep up with the, the program, click the notification icon. But keep in mind, you're probably going to see something something some kind of video every single day or at least most days so do check back uh, normally at 5 p.m gmt and 12 lunchtime at eastern standard time for for something new in the trek universe looking at this interesting new take on the trek verse if you want to support us to do more cool things there's a couple of great ways you can support us on patreon a great service to help creators like us to have the backbone of support that we keep doing what we do you can join us for our regular lives. Uh, you can ask a question via our super chat, or just be part of the conversation and spread the word. That's obviously the free ways, just spreading the word. Uh, YouTube, uh, our main website. You can click the donate button. You can just go to our PayPal, and it goes towards um, trips and and things that are you know behind the scenes cool that you'll then you know be like whoa you did that that's so cool because you know that's our budget. Any other way, Stuart? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's basically it, guys. Uh, oh, don't I need get moss and Teespring. Um, well, there's lo lots oh. of ways. Yeah, yeah. Check the description below. There's lots of cool <laughs> stuff down there. Check out our Teespring store. Lots of cool merchandise and stuff. Other ways to support the show as well. So, anyway, guys, don't get stuck in the mirror universe. Make sure you come back and visit us, the Prime T Trek Team Trek Yards, because I think we're cooler than our mirror counterparts. But who knows? If you see them, talk to them. Let us know. Anyway, looking forward to seeing you guys next time. Until then, I'm Captain Foley. I am Kamal Kings. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs>